Hello, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist that's been in practice doing mainly psychopharmacology for over 30 years. And uh, in 2010, I added uh, TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, these giant machines that give a strong magnetic field that you can treat depression with also. Now, excuse us if we have a little noise in the background. There's some construction going on outside. I uh, went to undergraduate at Washington and Lee. And I did medical school at Georgetown, and I did my psychiatry residency at Columbia. Now, what I want to talk about today is what you do when you have a major depression. And a major depression just means the depression is uh, so severe that you can barely go to work and that it's a real struggle to do everything. If somebody has a mild depression, uh, like pervasive depressive disorder or dysthymia, they struggle a little bit and they feel unhappy all the time, but it's not a major struggle. And the, and the symptoms of depression are varied, but it's really a syndrome. It's not just the symptom of depression. Every once in a while, you'll meet somebody that has this syndrome, and they're hardly depressed at all. But it's a sleep problem where you have trouble falling asleep, you're sleeping way too much, your ability to enjoy things is way down, your motivation is down, it's hard to get yourself to go see friends, you have a lot of lassitude, and if your spouse says, please go get a loaf of bread, it's an enormous uh, amount of emotional energy you have to put into it to go, to go get the bread. And frequently you'll have a lot of thoughts about death, either worrying about death or wanting to be dead or having fantasies about killing yourself. Now, of course, if the fantasies are getting close to uh, reality and, and you're having a lot of uh, fantasies about how you would do it and you're thinking you could do it in the near future, definitely go get help right away. Because this is, this is a medical disorder. It's not uh, a lifelong sentence. But it's hard when you inside this uh, episode to, to seek help, you, 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 you want to stay in the dark alone. You don't want to go out to seek help. It's very hard. But right. Yeah, it's, it's often of very visits. hard for people with this to go seek help because part of the disorder is this lassitude, this inability to take initiative. And I just had a phone call from a mother and her son's in his late 20s, and he's been so depressed for so many years. And... Uh, has really failed on medications, and uh, I actually think he should have been on different medications. That's another story. But uh, he can't even make his own phone call to come in here. And uh, that's okay. You know, she can call and make the, the appointment. And, uh, and then I may try to induce his psychiatrist to change his medications, and then we'll do this TMS treatment. But it's very difficult to get these people treated sometimes, but it's very important. And in areas of the country with uh, much fewer psychiatrists and a lot more guns, the suicide rate is very high. And uh, it's just uh, important to get treated. And then, late, and then some time ago they put warnings on some of the antidepressants that it increases the suicidality of young people and children. And uh, in these research projects that were done, yes, the suicidal thoughts went up in young people, but none of them committed suicide. And then, because of the fear of the antidepressants by the parents and the psychiatrists, all over the country, there was a decrease in the amount of prescriptions for antidepressants and there was an increase in suicides. And uh, in the counties that had the least prescriptions for antidepressants on a population basis had the most suicides. Uh, the antidepressants save lives. Now, if you're having 
the very first depression of your life and you've always felt good about life and never felt particularly negative and some event set this off, you might go try psychotherapy. And sometimes that can work rather well. And uh, I, if you're very suicidal or having a lot of wishes to be dead, I would do both the psychotherapy and the medication right from the beginning. And if the psychotherapy doesn't seem to be having a big benefit in a month, if you're not improving significantly in a month, or maybe two, it's hard to say, then you should go get some medication because the medication doesn't always work immediately. Uh, and then the doctor should check uh, a few things on blood tests like a B12 and an iron level and an HSCRP that's a measure of inflammation uh, and uh, the MTHFR gene that's MTHFR gene which uh, when that's a little abnormal then it indicates that folate will help the depression now there's so many options of antidepressants to give now but in uh, in treating people, you should keep in, in context that there's two general types of depression. There's the classic depression where you can't sleep, you're waking up at three or four in the morning and can't get back to sleep and you're miserable and it's probably hard to take a nap during the day and, uh, and you lose your appetite and you're losing weight and you're not particularly reactive to events. If somebody gets angry at you, say, oh, what, oh, what matters? Uh, I don't care anyway. I'm so depressed. Or if, you, if you win the lottery, you say, well, so what? I'm so depressed. And then there's what we call atypical depression, which is not so atypical since it makes up about a third of all depressions. And in that, those particular symptoms are different. The person sleeps too much. They can easily sleep 12, 14 hours a day and then maybe even take a nap during the day. And it's very difficult to get out of bed. And their appetite generally goes up and they're really hungry and can hardly control it and they gain weight. And they're more rejection sensitive. So if they, if they make a small mistake and, uh, and somebody they respect or a teacher or relative gets a little angry at them, just a little angry because they only made a little mistake and it ruins their evening they think about it and uh, so even when they're not depressed these things really hurt them and then of course if there's a big event like a romantic disappointment or getting fired from a job that may send them into a big depression that'll last weeks or months where they find a great difficulty to get out of bed and uh, so on and some of these people can function enough to work depending on how severe the depression is five days a week but then maybe on the weekend they're going to sleep most of the weekend they're going to give in to the um, hypersomnia the uh, standard depression is generally treated by the common serotonin uh, medications like Prozac, Zoloft, Celexa, Lexapro, and so on, and also the uh, the uh, medications that hit two receptors like Cymbalta, Duloxetine, and uh, Effexor. And generally, people are going to respond well. Now, they may, may need other things added. If they're having massive panic attacks during their depressions, they may need an anti-anxiety agent to try to suppress that. Uh, if they're having severe insomnia, they may need something to help them sleep so they're not so miserable. And uh, if they're really getting a little delusional, they're so depressed that they're believing things that aren't true, then they may need a little bit of an atypical antipsychotic. 
Now, the other group of people, the ones that are atypical, they often get treated the same way, and very often they respond well and do well. But in many cases, those antidepressants poop out. And they, these are some of the people that go on to taking many, many antidepressants that don't work. And eventually, they should be on different antidepressants like MAO inhibitors, uh, certain medicines where you can't eat cheese, and they should be on Lamictal, Lamotrigine, and possibly Depakote, two anti-seizure medicines that help depression, and low doses of lithium. Very low doses of lithium help depression, and um, people are afraid of them because they heard the name with, associated with manic depression, but low doses, uh, like 150 to 300 milligrams, is, is like a different medication compared to the high doses. And, uh, and that's my little summary what of what about, the, What about uh, PMS? What about treatment with? Uh, transaction magnetic uh, oh, stimulants. I forgot. I always forget, even though I've got four machines, two machines here and two machines in another office. Uh, if you're still not getting better, you should definitely do transcran transcranial magnetic stimulation. Transcranial just means that this huge magnet can cross the skull extremely easily. The, the magnetic field, uh, it's, it's not blocked at all. And, uh, and then uh, the magnet goes on and off and pulses, and it changes the electrical activity. So generally, we do an inhibitory treatment up here, where it calms down the brain, or an excitatory treatment here, which activates the left side of the brain, or we do both at once, and there's some other newer places to treat. And this can also be started at the same time as the medication, if you want to make doubly sure you get out of this depression fast. And people who've been failing on medicines, or the medicines don't bring them to 100%, they definitely should do this. It has a very long-acting effect and people often don't relapse for many months or even a few years, although they need to stay on some maintenance medication. They need to stay on something to prevent them from relapsing. And in the atypicals, a lot of times that's something like Lamotrigine, Lamictal, and low-dose lithium, a combination of which has very little side effects. Uh, most people that come to see us have failed on multiple antidepressants over the years. One after the other had no benefit or a brief benefit that uh, lost its effect in a few uh, weeks or months. And some people had very good benefit from Zoloft or Prozac for six years, ten years. And then when it pooped out and stopped working, none of the other standard antidepressants would work, or work only briefly. And these people are much better off on an MAO inhibitor, and low-dose Lamictal, and low-dose Lithium, and things like that. And, uh, and they also may, may need TMS to help them out a bit. And one fellow, Jay Amsterdam, said a long time ago that people that have been on multiple antidepressants without much benefit are thought of as being really treatment resistant and that's why they've needed all these antidepressants. And he said maybe it's the other way around that they're very treatment resistant because they've been on so many different antidepressants and it's just altered the receptors to an extraordinary degree. And uh, perhaps they would have been better off if they just stuck the first or second antidepressant and then not change it but add augmentation strategies onto that antidepressant. Uh, it's sort of hard to prove, but I think he's right. Besides that, why should you keep doing something over and over again that's failed? Uh, you might as well throw it out. Betty Carter, who was a great family therapist, she said about 
family problems, uh, like disciplining your son. She says, does it work? And the guy says, no. And she says, if it doesn't work, throw it out. Stop doing it. And, uh, and I think the same thing should be done with uh, using the FDA-approved antidepressants over and over again when there's no benefit. So this is Robert McMullen, MD, and I just gave a, a little summary of treating major depression, severe depression. Thank you very much, Doctor.